I live with mania on pretty much a nightly basis. Um, sometimes I describe it as a dagger in the mind or to refer to one of my books, it is a mind blade. Mania, just like delusions and paranoia, general psychosis, unstable moods, feels like a mind blade. Um, and it can be very painful, it can cause a lot of suffering, and it can be very intense. I suffer with mania pretty much every night, and it can be very troublesome, but I know that I have to get through it if I'm going to be able to function the next day. Medications help with that, as well as uh, certain exercises, whether that includes doing activities, such as making YouTube videos or writing, um, or sometimes turning the lights off and just trying to meditate, or trying to meditate in general. Uh, these practices tend to help. Mania is characterized by impaired judgment as well as um, excessive activity. Um, sometimes a euphoric mood as well. Though with my mania, it's usually not euphoric, at least not in the sense you'd expect of like ex excessive happiness. It would be euphoric in the sense of uh, a very strong emotion that's difficult to quell. Although that would play more into the unstable moods category. But nonetheless, it's very intense having um, mania. Uh, I'm manic right now, doing my best to keep it calm. I know that I will get through it, the medications will click, and uh, doing the various things that I do, I will be able to be calm. But it's very hard because one of the problems with mania, with the racing thoughts, with the constant ideas, with the ideations, with the things that you want to do, with the desires that you have, one of the hardest things is um, this feeling that you aren't living up to your expectations. So Heidegger has his idea of conscience, and the conscience is this idea where you're not living up to your expectation. And mania takes that, and it increases it tenfold. It increases it to the point to where you feel like you're not doing anything. And so in a way, you kind of overcompensate by doing even more things. And it's a very pervasive feeling for me. It's not so much that I feel like the work that I do is worthless. It's not even necessarily that I feel like the work that I do is meaningless because I don't think the work that I do is meaningless by any stretch of the imagination. And I also think that it is enough. But nonetheless, you're struck, and this is the, this is the uh, irony um, and the incongruency, but the idea is that when you're struck with mania, you still feel like you're missing something. You still feel like you haven't figured something out. You still feel like you need to continue to push towards something, whether that means doing an activity or whether that means thinking harder. And even if you're already exhausted, you still feel like you need to do these things. And so that's why even though I'm tired now, I still feel myself having a drive to do even more. And that's one of the confusing things about it. It is, in a sense, a double-edged sword. Um, it's, to me personally, very confusing. I don't understand how I can do the things that I do and be productive. Um, with my writing, with my um, work with the homeless, with dealing with my mental illness in general and still feel like I'm not doing enough. But I think that's because inherent with mania is this extreme drive that we have. It's an extreme push. We want our mind to achieve something important. And this falls into a little bit of another aspect of mania, which is grandiose delusions and grandiosity, which is the idea that you can achieve really great things or impossible things. For me, it's not so much that I think I can achieve the impossible, it's more just this idea that I think that I can achieve, um, that I need, that I must achieve something that is better than me, that is beyond me. And that can be very troubling. Um, mania is in that sense very difficult to control, um, but I also realize that mania is a part of the process and I understand that the drive pushes me um, and that the racing thoughts are important for um, kind of helping me try harder. Um, I know that there's limitations to mania itself um, and my whole philosophy about mania in the sense that some people would say that your mind can only take you too far. But I would admit that that's where I rebel and I say, no, my mind is going to get me very far and I'm going to make it get me far. Um, and that's why I, I put myself through the ringer and force my mind to work hard. And that's why I go with the drive because I feel like I need to work harder to make my mind meaningful and make my mind achieve what it desperately wants to achieve. Um, 
and I don't even necessarily mean that in a grandiose sense. Um, I would also say that um, I don't necessarily like mania because it's a very unpleasant experience. You, you just have like this anxiety and this restlessness that can be very pervasive in your being and very difficult to cope with. But nonetheless, um, I also see it as an integral part to my life. And um, I understand that many people could not relate in the sense that they don't have chemicals firing in their brain that give them a manic experience. Um, but that doesn't make the mania any less real. And basically what I take away from that idea of people not being able to relate to mania is that it really is an altered state of consciousness. And that's what I really want to um, the wrestle with. And that's what I really want to maximize. I want to maximize that manic state. Whenever I'm in a manic state, I want to be able to push that to be able to achieve something important and not important in any grandiose sense, not important in the sense that it's like better than other things that people have accomplished, but just in the sense that it's this very sincere and genuine pushing uh, forward and this intense striving. I know this is um, very intense to talk about, but I wanted to talk about some of my experiences with mania. Um, just understand that I will get through this mania, but that um, I wanted to talk about it honestly and openly, um, express my story and express that even though I'm manic now, I know that I will be okay because somehow I'm always okay and I find comfort in that. So basically if you wanted to know what it's like to be manic at night, to have what I like to call my midnight mania, this is what it's like. Um, this is Phoenix and thank you.